Welcome. The American Meteorological Society has just issued its summary of news items concerning weather and climate. So I thought I would put together some of the more interesting items into a short video. I'm sure many of you have seen the spectacular images of the double tornado near Pilger, Nebraska. One of these was an EF4, which is the second highest category of tornado, with winds up to 200 miles per hour. It has been claimed in some report that this double tornado was in fact a unique event. However, looking back over the records, there are many examples of multiple tornadoes. This prompted one of the researchers to come up with this rather interesting rhyme. Big whirls have little whirls that feed on their velocity, and little whirls have lesser whirls, and so on to viscosity. Sorry, that's an inside fluid dynamics joke. To somebody who studies fluid dynamics, that was extraordinarily funny, and they probably just fell off their chair laughing. A report in the Nature Climate Journal points out that extreme weather conditions repeat in the same areas again and again. Floods seem to be the prerogative of Western Asia when there are extreme monsoons. Droughts seem to occur in Africa and southwest of the United States. Heat waves are a feature of Central Asia. And all this is due to repetitive winter patterns that bring the same weather again and again to the same areas. A while ago, the Pentagon came out with a report describing the potential military and uh, political threats caused by global warming. One of those areas that is most vulnerable to global warming is Pakistan. The major river, the Indus River in Pakistan, provides 90% of the water used in Pakistan's farming. And it also produces, through hydroelectrics, over 50% of the electricity supply for Pakistan. There was a very much reduced flow in the Indus River from 1999 to 2002 due to extreme drought in northern Pakistan. Then a decade later, thousands were killed by floods and millions displaced. These sorts of events can cause political instability and in a country that has nuclear weapons, that is not a good thing. Did your sports team recently lose? Well, according to AccuWeather, you can blame it on the weather. Several different changes in the weather can affect the way that a ball flies. The temperature, for example, can change the trajectory of the ball through the air. And it also can affect your grip on the ball when you're trying to throw it. The air density uh, will regulate the distance that the ball will go. Wind, of course, will affect the flight of the ball. And the level of the lighting will affect how well players see the ball. So now I have an excuse for every bad shot I play in golf. We've all heard of the difficulties that family farmers are having. With droughts and floods, heat waves... New diseases coming, new pests, the bee die off, and of course financial issues. But now many farmers are installing wind farms on their land. The wind farm gives them a steady and reliable income, while still enabling them to use most of their land for farming. Meanwhile, we all get the benefit of cheap renewable power. In 2012, there was a dramatic increase in the rate at which uh, the Greenland ice caps started to melt. At the time, people were not sure why. However, new research is pointing the way to the problem being dust and dirt. Dust carried to Greenland on the winds fall on the ice, darkening it. Thus, it drops its albedo, enabling it to absorb more sunlight. As the snow melts, the dust concentrates into small puddles, darkening the surface yet further, like the patch shown here. You can see how much more sunlight this patch would absorb than the surrounding ice. Therefore, it will warm much faster than the surrounding area, growing faster and faster and melting more and more ice. So you're getting a much increased rate at which the ice cap is melting. For the last few months, I've been reporting that an El Nino is increasingly likely. In fact, there's an 80% chance that we'll have a major El Nino event by the summer. However, this has been seized upon by some of the usual doom and gloomers to predict a super El Nino which is, of course, going to cause all sorts of disasters in the coming months. Such reports have prompted NOAA to put out a press statement saying that they are predicting a moderate to strong El Nino, not a super El Nino. Thus, the end times are not upon us, but we can expect several months of record high temperatures in the coming year. There has been a lot of discussion of the use of drones around the world. However, they are considering using drones in California to try to alleviate the drought by cloud seeding with silver iodide. 
But the problem there is that you first you need clouds, and with the current weather pattern they're not getting very many. There's also been questions about the toxicity of silver iodide, and also whether uh, cloud seeding is effective. And all it does is means that you shift where it rains. Wherever you do the cloud seeding you will likely get more rain, but downwind of there will get less rain. So it's only moving the problem from one area to another. Another effect of the California drought, which is undoubtedly enhanced by global warming, is that we're all having to take more money out of our pockets to pay for fruits and vegetables. California produces half of the US's fruits, nuts and vegetables. With yields down, then we all get to pay more. So this effectively is an unseen tax caused by global warming. It is the price of doing nothing. But increasing food prices is not the only hidden tax we pay. Insurance rates are going up because of natural disasters. We're spending more in taxes on uh, disaster relief around the country. There's a lot of uninsured property and land losses suffered by citizens. And also there's an increasingly large number of deaths around the world from the effects of global warming. The World Health Organization estimates that about 250,000 people die unnecessarily as the result of global warming. And the longer we leave it, the higher the price is going to be. So wouldn't it be better now to spend a little more to develop renewable energy sources than to continue to do nothing and increasingly pay these hidden taxes? Just a little food for thought. See you next time.